Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Alex. Today I'm doing a test of the MacBook Air M1. And if you caught my previous video on Android Studio, I tested against this machine, which is the MacBook Pro 16 inch with Core i9 processor. And today I'm gonna be testing this one, which is the Asus Rogue Strix with a Ryzen 9 processor in there, a beast of a machine that's been doing really well in the test so far. But what's different about this one? This one, we have Android Studio with Apple Silicon support. So so we'll see if it's going to be faster than these two machines, which are way more expensive. The MacBook Pro 16 inch is about a $4,000 machine. And this Asus Ryzen 9 is a $2,000 machine, whereas the MacBook Air is just $1,000. And I think you can get on sale now. So if you do want to see the video of me running these two machines together, you can check that out. I'll link to it down below. Today, we're doing these two machines. And remember, if you're a subscriber to the channel, you get to participate in weekly drawing. This week, it's Victor Hugo Masutani. Congratulations, Victor. Get in touch. We'll send you out some cash. All right, so here I've got the MacBook Air M1, and this is a $1,000 machine, which is about half the price of this monster gaming laptop, which is a $2,000 machine. It's two times the price. It's an Asus Rogue Strix with a Ryzen 9 5900HX and a GPU. RTX 3070 in it. Not that that matters for this particular test, because what we're doing is building this project by Yojik Android Studio Benchmark. It's up on GitHub. You can download it if you want. I'll link to it down below. And this is a project that's been forked from Firefox Mobile by Sergei Radhivsky, who also has his own YouTube channel. I'll link to him as well. And he did this so that we can keep track of different machines, different performance benchmarks running this project at one point in time. I've already done tests using this on this channel before. And today I'm gonna do another test. And finally, we're gonna get to this Ryzen 9 and see if it can beat the M1. The M1 has been really kicking some serious butt. And a lot of you have been wondering, maybe the Ryzen 9 can actually beat it. Well, we'll see today. So I'm gonna clone this project on both machines. And by the way, I'm gonna run it from scratch and I'm gonna keep track of each run. First time it's gonna run, it's gonna take a little bit longer. And I know this because I've done this before. And then subsequent runs are gonna take about the consistent amount of time. So I'm gonna report the more consistent time at the end of this video. So I'll do a fresh new Git clone here on both of these machines. And once that's done, let's open this up in Android Studio. Now I'm using the latest Android Studio and on the M1, I'm using the Apple Silicon version of Android Studio. So this is Arctic Fox 2020.3.1. As you can see, that's the same version I'm using on my Windows machine here as well. So I've opened up the project and notice right away that the Apple Silicon version of Android Studio is ready to go. No more processing on this. And on this one, we still have to wait for that Gradle build to finish, which is one of those things I really dislike about Android development is opening up a project, although it is much faster than it used to be, even for this large project here. So we're ready to go and we're ready to test this. Now, this does come with a couple of Gradle scripts that are recommended to run according to the instructions in the readme file. The first one is the clean command, which I'm gonna run immediately and I'm going to run that between each one of my builds. So I'm going to go to the Gradle script here, run clean. And when that's done, of course it took zero seconds because it was already clean, but just in case. When that's done, I'm going to run the next command, which is going to be assemble debug. So there's assemble debug. I'm going to get that ready on the Windows machine, on the Ryzen 9 machine, and I'm going to get this ready here as well because, well, I like doing races on this channel and pressing the enter key at the same time to see who's gonna finish first, even though this will report the build time at the end. So let's do it and let's go. All right, they're building. Now I did build this project on the MacBook Air several times already and I've done this uh, in previous video. You can see that on this channel. I raced it against the MacBook Pro with the Intel Core i9. So I know that it's gonna take about a minute and a half as the final time to run on the MacBook Air. Let's see what this one does. Now at this point, the Intel box was already making all sorts of noises and it was getting really hot. This one is still pretty calm. And by the way, it is plugged in. One thing I did notice on the Ryzen box is that if it's unplugged, even though the power settings are set to maximum when run on battery, I've changed the power profile, it still takes longer to build the project when run on battery as opposed to being plugged in. So if you wanna get the most performance out of this machine you always have to have it plugged in it's a little bit unfortunate and the first build is done now this one is going to be a little bit longer than the subsequent builds at a minute and 53 seconds on the macbook air we're still waiting for the ryzen 9 machine to complete its build hmm 
At this point, it's taking even longer than the Intel box for the first build. Okay, finally. Whew. 2 minutes and 48 seconds for the first build. Now the subsequent builds are going to be much shorter, even though I'm going to be cleaning the project in between. So let's do that. I'm going to go here and run the clean script and I'm going to do the same thing here as well. Actually, it has my recents saved, so I'm just going to double click on that. Now on the M1, the clean script even takes two seconds to do while this one is still working at it 11 seconds on the Ryzen 9. Now one thing to keep in mind is that I'm not exactly comparing apples to apples here. I'm comparing a Mac OS version of Android Studio that's optimized for Apple Silicon versus Android Studio that's running on a completely different architecture built for Windows. So yeah, these are not the same thing, but that's not the point. The point is that if you are going to go with a Mac or if you are going to go with the Windows, you have to know what you're getting yourself into. So if you are going to be in a Windows environment, working on Windows, building Android apps, then that's what you're working with, right? You don't have a choice of installing Mac OS on a PC machine like this and running Android Studio on that because you might think that it's going to be faster. No, if you want a faster machine you're gonna have to get the Mac whether you get the Intel Mac or an Apple Silicon Mac that's a whole different story we're about to do another test to see if this Ryzen machine is actually gonna be faster than the Intel Core i9 but from what I've seen so far the M1 being a cheaper machine a cheaper option than both the Intel Mac and the Ryzen Mac seems to be outperforming both of those machines in the Android builds. So let's do one more test. I'm going to do another assemble debug. I'm going to select that here and here as well. And let's hit our enter button at the same time. Boom. And they're off to the races. Let's see who finishes first and what the difference will be in time for subsequent builds. One interesting thing here is by default on the Mac, Android Studio comes in light mode, but by default, it comes in dark mode on the Windows. I didn't change this. This is the way it came. Interesting. All right. It should be coming to a close pretty soon here, at least on the MacBook Air. And it's done at 1 minute and 27 seconds, which is pretty consistent to what I've seen it do before. I'm going to write that down so I can do a report at the end and we'll do some averages for you. This one is still running. Should be faster than the 2 minutes and 48 seconds we saw on the first build, but we'll see. And it's done at 2 minutes and 5 seconds, which is pretty close to the Intel Core i9 numbers as well. It's about 3 seconds slower, but let's do one more time and see if it's going to be faster. So I'm going to clean this, clean both of these, and let's do that assemble debug one more time. I'm going to start this one first. Oops, give it a little bit of a head run to see <laughs> if it can actually finish first before the M1 for a change. Hmm, when should I start the M1 build? Hmm, how about uh, now? Now it's going to be an interesting test to see which one will finish first. <laughs> I know we have the numbers printed out at the end. This is just a little bit of fun. Now I actually have to watch them to see which one's going to finish first though. I feel like I'm at a casino waiting for the slot machines or roulette table. Come up with my number. Not that I have a number in this race, but you know what I mean. Oh, it's still the MacBook Air at 1 minute 25 seconds. Ah, wow. <laughs> what an impressive little machine, huh? And this one took two minutes and two seconds. So there you go, folks. I'll put the numbers up on the screen right now. Here are the totals. And as you can see, the MacBook Air M1 with the Android Studio for Apple Silicon is doing pretty well still. If you want to see that other video, me running it against the Intel box, I'll link to it right here. Thank you for watching this video. I'd appreciate a like and a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed yet, click on that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. I'll see you next time.